All right. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoy the conference. So, uh, so open source is a great thing, right? And uh, if you've been in the open source community, you'll see how open source changes in the world, right? We have a lot of impact. Uh, and although we have no idea what our users will do with all the cool things we make, or who even our users are, we know who contributes to these projects. Uh, and if you look to the mailing list and uh, GitHub blogs or whatever, you notice that it's a small group of people because it takes commitment and it takes skill to contribute. And our next speaker comes from a company with massive contributions to RISC V, both in the specifications and code. Uh, they're all over the place. So please welcome to the stage Mark Hader, co-founder and CSO of Rivos. Well, thank, thank you, everybody, and uh, well, go on. I'm uh, pleased to talk to you today. I'm, 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 I'm not actually sure if I've got a Rivas hat on today or uh, it's more of a, a risk Five Association hat because uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stress mostly the uh, RBA 23 profiles and why it's important. Um, I think... Uh, some of this we've already heard from some of the other speakers, so uh, hopefully it won't be too repetitive. Um, also, I'm, I'm, I'm about to make half the audience unhappy with me because I have missed their logos off. Um, the slide of RISC-V implementations, but this is what it's all, it's all about. We, we have an open uh, standard specification and it's really working. We've got lots of implementations. We've got commercial. We've got open source. We've got, we've got the, the um, not-for-profit not, not associations. We have a bunch of SOCs using it in a bunch of different ways. Um, and this really talks to the strength and uh, is, is one of the reasons why RISC-V is definitely the architecture for the future. Um, but it's also scary because if you're developing software for RISC-V, um, you see all of these different implementations and you see all of the different extensions and you say, well, what, what do I write software for? And this is where the goal of profiles came in. So, so we start with our core RISA and all the extensions that we use to enable the diversity of the ecosystem. Um, and there's, there's extensions to the ISA, of course, but there's also non-ISA extensions like Intrups, IOMMU, so on. There's, there's all the software specifications, and then there's even vendor-specific um, done in a, in a very well-controlled way that, that, that makes them actually usable. Um, so we have to somehow provide certainty for the software community. And that's what profiles are all about. It's providing certainty for people uh, predominantly writing user space software. And uh, the, the, there are a couple, the, the application processor and the embedded processor just came out with, with versions announced uh, in the US summit. And that's a very critical milestone for allowing software adoption. I'm also going to talk a little bit about platforms. And what platforms are about is providing certainty for the OS and firmware writers. So it provides more details about what the low levels of the system are providing. And again, these are, these are geared up to uh, meet the particular ecosystem needs for the area they're in. So profiles, and more specifically the RVA23 profile, are really for developers. Uh, developers writing applications, particularly if they're going to distribute in a binary form as part of some sort of distribution, or if they're making them available for uh, download from a store or, or, or some sort of online repository, um, they want to know that it doesn't matter which vendor of RISC-V they're downloaded to, 
the code will run. And so the RVA23 profile takes all of the good work that's been going on in the last few years to get the ISA in good shape, to get all these extensions, particularly things like vector um, and uh, some of the bit manipulation that came in more recently, and provide a map for user-level application writers to ensure portability. Um, again, there's different domains. There's, there's a slightly more, more relaxed uh, embedded domain, because in the embedded space, people normally recompile everything. Um, and then there's uh, the, the starting point of a microcontroller profile um, that, that's also coming out. Platforms, as I said, do the same thing at the, uh, at the sort of next level. So uh, in particular, the, the RISC-V server platform is, is coming up soon. And this is to provide certainty for the OS developers. If, uh, if I'm writing uh, the OS support, I do want to know, again, that I can install it on any vendor's RISC-V uh, at least in the server profile, and there'll be, there'll be subsequent profiles uh, to address laptops and mobile and, and, and so forth. And uh, this means that you will be able to take an, an enterprise Linux distribution and install it on your RISC-V server, and you won't run into all the problems that... Uh, the gentleman from Scaleway was talking about yesterday because the platform specification will ensure that the hardware features that the OS needs are there and well specified. So these, uh, and in particular the RBA23, um, is actually applicable across lots of application areas. Um, the auto um, folks wanting, again, to be able to move vendors, server, as I just mentioned, mobile, um, and, you know, mobile, some of the things are important to get the instructions that will enable them to have higher density code and uh, implement some of the algorithms in, a, in an efficient way, and, uh, of course, laptops, somewhere in between the two. So there's a whole list of new features, um, and I'm going to just talk about the categories and a couple of the features. So there's mandatory features. These must be implemented to be part of the profile and to uh, advertise your part of the profile. And uh, one of my favorites here is uh, the wait on reservation set instructions. Um, if, if, and, and, and this is where you, you're seeing the RISC-V instruction set mature in terms of being able to be used in a power efficient way. So um, um, if you think about polling a flag, you do a load, you do a check, you do a branch back, you just sit there doing that. That's, that's energy inefficient. And you, you know that the flag's not going to have changed unless someone's done a store. And so you can use the same mechanism that's already there for load reserved store conditional. You do a load reserved, you, you get your reservation on that, uh, on that cache line or whichever size your reservation block is. And then you can simply say to the processor, wait until I lose that reservation. Because you're not, you're not it, no one's done a store, you'll lose the reservation when someone does a store. So again, energy efficient, that can be very helpful in the, uh, in the mobile and, and battery-powered spaces. There's also some localized uh, extensions, particularly around the, the, the things that are larger to implement, but maybe region-specific. So, so today, the, the ones are the, the, the vector crypto uh, using either the NISC algorithms or the Shangmi algorithms. Um, and uh, if you're targeting your part to a specific region, you may want to only implement one of them because they're, they're, they're quite large in terms of area. Um, if, you're, if you're aiming for worldwide, you might want to implement both of them. Um, development is flagging things that will 
likely be mandatory in a future profile. So if you're implementing, it's a kind of strong hint you should implement these. And then there's optional, um, which, uh, which when you take optional along with the uh, recommendation to raise illegal instruction exceptions, that can seem problematic. So for example, one of the, uh, one of the optional ones is, is, is part of the control flow integrity extension um, and is the shadow stack. So the idea here is you, you've, got, you've got a shadow of your stack pointer that uh, in the function entry and, and return you use to check that there's been no overwrite of the return address that's pushed on your stack. So this is great, except these are optional. So what happens on a processor that hasn't chosen to put these on? Isn't this, this is seemingly against the, uh, against the whole, the software guy has certainty. Um, except if you look in the mandatory set, there are things called maybe operations. And these are instructions that are, that are designed basically to be harmless um, in, the, in the standard case, basically writing a register with zero, or in the case of these instructions, writing the zero register with zero. Um, and so if you are on a processor that hasn't chosen to support such shadow stacks, then these instructions basically become no ops. And if, uh, if you're on a processor uh, um, with control flow integrity, then, then they work out. So this is one of the ways that uh, the RISC-V um, profile has successfully included optional features while maintaining that level of software compatibility that we need. So the call to action here is if you're a developer, um, for a CPU, use RVA23 so that you're a target for a binary dis distribution. And if you're developing applications, use RVA23 for your optimization target. Turning to the server platform, which is uh, obviously close to my heart and uh, hopefully will, will address many of the points that uh, Scareway raised yesterday, um, this extends, so it's built on RVA23, which, which talks about how the application layer works, but it also adds what the SOC and what the hardware is providing and what the boot time firmware is providing. Um, and and as, as was mentioned yesterday, the importance of using um, traditional server boot like UEFI and the associated ACPI and, and, and so forth, and then how to, how to uh, how to interact with the SOC. And on the SOC side, that, that, that forms the basis of the server SOC specification, um, which, which says things like, you're gonna use an IOMMU, your timers look like this. It goes into more detail on the, on the, uh, the, the, uh, the clock tick rates that, you, that, that software can rely on. It talks about using the advanced interrupt controller so that uh, all that works out. Uh, got a lot of stuff on how PCI subsystem works. PCI is nice because you can discover what's out there using the configuration space, which is accessed through um, an area of memory mapped address called ECAM. But how do you know where in your address map the ECAM space is? And that's something that then comes from the boot and runtime services providing that level of information. So, so these, these specs sort of all intertwine in order to provide the level of knowledge that, uh, that the OS needs. Um, and uh, so again, call to action, help with the final stages of the server platform. Uh, it's going to public review probably a month or so and uh, Please, please help get that, that across the line. And if you're developing SOCs for the server space, make sure you adopt the platform specification for your parts. How does this help? Well, it helps for the announcement that we did with Canonical 
recently to, uh, to bring the, the data center Ubuntu to RISC-V. And this is, again, enabled by both of these things I've been talking about, the, the, the RVA23 profile and the server platform. So although Rivas and Canonical make the announcement, its goal is a distribution that will work for all vendors of RISC-V servers who follow the profile and platform spec. And uh, if you want to understand more about the details of that, there is a, there is a little video um, that's released on Canonical's site and, and, and our YouTube site. Um, and I, I know it's longer, but I think the six-minute version is better than the two-minute version. Um, and uh, I'll end with a, with a shameless plug for next week. Um, we, we, we're going to be at the RISC-V Taipei Day, which is jointly held with Computex. So if you happen to be in, in Taiwan next week, stop by and see the RISC-V booths there. Uh, enjoy Computex. And uh, if you can swing by the A-Speed booth, um, we've, got, we've got our uh, op open compute uh, DCSCM control card being shown there. Um, and uh, we intend to, to open up the the KiCad schematics and a web viewable version uh, just as soon as we get what license to use sorted out. Thank you. So, uh, do we have any questions? There you go. It's not a question, it's a praise. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for your excellent summary of the contents of the RVA23 and the values for the ecosystem. Thank you.